Trying to define yourself is like trying to bite your own teeth. Alan Watts All of us are already on the journey back to truth. It doesn't matter the path we take because no matter where we are at or how it looks, we are all on our own timeline of being led back to truth. Returning back to ourselves is the pathway of embodying our most authentic self within this lifetime. It is the art of becoming the human the universe intended us to be. When we choose to devote ourselves to this pathway, we become devoted not only to ourselves, but to the planet, to the universe, and all of its beings. It is a spiral journey that guides us deeper and deeper to the truth within ourselves. Everything you need is already within you. I'm on my own unique pathway towards my own truth acting only as a mirror for you to see your own truths. I refuse to live my life asleep, allowing my illusions and fears to control the outcome of my life. This is not the fate I desire, and the fact that you are here tells me you feel the same. The desire to live within truth and authenticity is the spark that will set a raging fire to the soul. The world needs you, all of you, it is time for you to be here and do what you came to do, which is simply to become yourself. The Crown Chakra and the Third Eye Sahasrara, or the Crown Chakra, is the masculine crown center of the body. This chakra is about merging with higher consciousness and remembering there is more to life than the mundane. It is the center that connects us to a higher power, our higher self, and to spirit. As stated in the book, Eastern Body, Western Mind by Anadea Judith, the crown chakra is the thousand petaled lotus. Most people think of the petals as reaching up into the heavens. Actually, the lotus petals turn downward like a sunflower, dripping nectar into the crown and down through the chakras. In this way, the two ends of the spectrum are profoundly connected. How can a lotus bloom without roots in the earth? How can it reach heaven if its roots are not deep and wide? If we are not fully grounded and present within our body and the earth, then it becomes difficult to expand into a higher realm of consciousness. This is the realm where we can connect with God, source, the universe, our higher self, spirit, or whatever we may connect with. Here we are able to connect with our intuition, become inspired, and discover our purpose to why we are here on earth. We are reminded that there is more to life way beyond the daily mundane routine. We can experience what some may call magic, which really is just the universal energy that flows through all beings. Ajna, the Sanskrit name for the third eye, is where we envision, imagine, and dream. When opened, it can allow us to see beyond our own perspective. This is where we receive our visions, ideas, truths, and see our higher self and spiritual gifts. It is also where we can become stuck in our own illusions, beliefs, and delusions. Through the crown and third eye chakras, we can become a witness to ourselves in the physical realm and beyond. We can become aware of all that is holding us back and all that we are not. By doing so, we can become aware of all that we are and what we are truly capable of. Through the second gateway, we can envision and create from our highest power. We can awaken to who we truly are and bring that into this physical realm. The thoughts you carry in your mind are what create your reality. In 2005, the National Science Foundation did a study on people's thoughts. According to their studies, they found that each person has about 12,000 to 60,000 thoughts per day. 80% of those thoughts were negative, and 95% of those thoughts were repetitive. So if your thoughts are what's creating your reality, and you're having 80% negative thoughts, and the same thoughts 95% of the day, your reality is going to be the same negative cycle that you experience every day. Based on this information, it makes complete sense why humanity is where it's at right now. To shift your thoughts, you must first become aware of your thought patterns. Only when we become aware of those negative thought patterns can we consciously replace them with positive thought patterns. And through those positive thought patterns, 
we can create the reality that we desire to live in. Here are a few practices that help me bring awareness to my thoughts. The first is daily journaling. Daily journaling has been a great tool for me to bring awareness to my thoughts. I like to do what I call dump journaling. I set a timer for 10 to 15 minutes and dump my thoughts out, writing down whatever is on my mind or heart. After a few days or up to a week, I review my writings and highlight any repeating patterns I may find. I analyze that these thought patterns are negative or positive, and if they encourage the reality I desire to create. I like to burn these thoughts when I'm done with them. This helps me be as truthful and honest as possible without the feeling that whatever I write may be permanent. Another tool that I like to use is the work by Byron Katie. The book Loving What Is by Byron Katie changed my life. She shares a four question process that helps analyze your thoughts and beliefs and bring awareness to the reality and projections you may be experiencing. She teaches us how to release the need to resist life and to bring awareness to the truth of existence. I recommend the audiobook and she has a great app you can use on your phone for any time a belief or thought comes up. And the last tool I will share in this video is breathwork and meditation. Breathwork and meditation are great tools in helping me clear my mind and come back to center. For me, it's so important to take daily time with no distractions to turn inward to myself. Every day we are bombarded by so many distractions, work, school, phones, media, people, obligations, responsibilities, etc. If we don't take the time to sit down and bring awareness to what we are actually feeling and experiencing on the inside, our thoughts can take over. I noticed when I first started meditating, I felt overwhelmed by the amount of thoughts that came up. I tried to push them away and ignore them, but they were persistent. Once I finally gave myself time to actually sit down with my thoughts and feelings, my meditations and breath work became more peaceful. I would love to hear what tools you use to help bring awareness to your thoughts and quiet your mind. Let me know in the comments below. Once you have brought awareness to your thoughts and begin to shift your thought patterns and beliefs, you start to clear a space to rewrite your story. This is where visualizing through the third eye begins to take place. Here you get to envision your dreams, goals, and your ideal version of your life. What does your highest self look like? Envision the highest version of yourself. What do you do? What do you wear? Where do you live? How do you feel? Imagine how your highest self experiences life through each of your five senses. It's so important to allow yourself to be imaginative and creative when envisioning your highest self in quantum field. Even if it feels too much or impossible, envision it anyways. Don't give your visualizations limitations. Dream big. Spirit is the name that I use to call the energy that flows through us all. It's the source that created all things in existence. It's the higher power that's larger than all things and all beings. And it can be called by many names, God, source, universe, energy, science, higher self, higher power. I'm not gonna claim I know exactly what it is, I don't. But what I can say is that I have felt whatever this higher power is and it seems to care very deeply about me and all sentient beings in this existence. And through my embodiment practice, I found myself deeper connected to spirit. I've found that I've connected deeper with my own self, my own truths, and I've always seemed to find guidance that somehow takes me to the right place, exactly where I'm meant to be. This path definitely isn't easy and a lot of times it doesn't make any sense. I have found it's always worth it. As I shared in the root chakra video, embodiment literally means to give a body to spirit. When we can clear our physical vessel through our body and clear our mind and thoughts, then we're able to be an open channel for spirit to flow through or our higher self, intuition, deeper connection to the universe and all that there is. Return to Self is designed to help us clear our bodies and minds so we can become a clear vessel 
to connect to our truest selves and our authenticity and our creative powers and our healing powers and connect back to the gift of wholeness that's always been there for us. During the first and second gateways, I take time to turn inwards and ask myself these questions. How can I clear my physical vessel to become an open channel for spirit? In what ways can I clear my mind to be an open channel for spirit? How has spirit already made its presence in my life? And as you go through these questions, please use whatever form of higher power you identify with that you feel the most comfortable with. The deeper I've connected with myself, the deeper I've felt that there is a higher power always there, always present, watching me and guiding me. The deeper I connect with this truth, I've seen how spirit has always been there for me, always guiding me, even at the times I haven't realized it. It's really beautiful to see how spirit has woven through every aspect of my life, bringing me into this present moment, somehow directing me on this path of life, whether I'm aware of it or not. As we quiet the mind, we can finally listen to the truth that is constantly speaking to us. This truth is always available for us and it's always here for us. We just have to listen. <laughs>